This NFL best ball edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet <coughs> is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted same game parlays to live in game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Bet 100 and get 100 at winbet.com or download the WinBet app and start winning today. State restrictions apply. We're also brought to you by the Sports Gambling Podcast Final Four Watch Party this Saturday. Sweat out your bets with us over on youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. Hey, this is Bill Romanowski. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Oh, it's. I mean, it feels good to be talking NFL. Yeah. All this, all these distractions currently. <laughs> I mean, I can't <laughs> believe they haven't <laughs> taken. What's going on here? Are you, do you have, do your, you have your? Yeah, you got to mute yourself, mute. Sean. On what? On what? On your computer. Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, a lot of distractions. Surprised they haven't moved March Madness to a best of three or even best of seven format to make sure we don't have these horrible underseeded teams from tiny little conferences playing for for the natty. I mean, how are if you're a college football guy at this point, how are you sitting here saying, you know what, the playoff? By popular demand, let's bring it. Back. Let's take another season to expand it. That it won't be good for football. That that's that seems to be the uh, the underwhelming argument in the college football landscape. So what's the underwhelming argument? Oh, the 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 pace at which they're moving to an expanded playoff. Like this has to a- a- accelerate that. Hopefully, right? Oh, uh, no, I I I I don't think they. I mean, they're doing whatever they want with the playoff. I don't know what okay. motivates them. All right. You See, think you think having an having a no, good no, March I, Madness? I was, I was making a, a joke about the fact that this is electric television. There's a lot of people out there that would rather see the blue bloods out there. I like the college football <laughs> crowd, Sean. Thank you. Welcome to the show. All right. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you for welcoming me on the show. We got a great show. Uh, it was messing up the audio, but we are live on Discord as well. So we're taking your calls, answering your questions for the NFL free agency. So feel free to uh, ask us anything you want about the National Football League. We'll get that going, and, and then uh, of and course there is a chat now too in the Discord. Somehow, I, I not exactly sure how that got turned up. We will not look at those messages. No, only be a man. On- <laughs> raise your hand. We will uh, talk to you on audio only. So again, if you have any <laughs> questions, fantasy football, gambling related, anything about the NFL and the off season, feel free to. Smash! That subscribe button over on the old uh, old Discord, and then uh, call it up, and we'll be ready to go and ready to rock it. And of course, if you're looking to get down on the NFL, NBA, March Madness, Final Four, we got our Final Four watch party all day Saturday for both games. Going to do some uh, live bets, in-game wagering, give out some prizes, and of course. If you're betting in game, you know you got to do it over at winbet.com or download that win betting app. Bet big, win even bigger. State restrictions apply. Of course, if you're looking to get that bet 100, get 100. So many ways to win. Spin that parlay wheel, and of course, hit the longest long shot of parlay of the week. You get a thousand dollar free credit. Again, so many ways to win. Offer subject to change terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state where playthrough winbet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. And uh, also, the Masters Stadium Swim. We will be announcing the winner soon. Uh, so you can come hang out with us, get a three night stay at the Circa Las Vegas, hang out with us at the Cabana for Stadium Swim. 
sportsgivenpodcast.com slash golf party. And again, uh, if you don't win the contest or if you just want to grab some rooms now, use a promo code SGP15. Snorkel. Well, snorkel well, are not included. P- potentially, there'll be a, sn- a private <laughs> snorkeling pool. Maybe some lessons. You got yes. We're definitely going to be. Oh, I'm sorry. Re- Do you have San Diego State in the Final Four? Sometimes snorkeling is the best method. Best method to see the under the underwater I love Colby world. Was re- come on, my- Colby was cheering for uh, Miami in the Texas game, even though Texas minus three and a half was his lock. <laughs> I, how can you do that? He, oh, I hate Texas. I would never root for them. Uh, then why would you make him your lock? His his handicapping style is uh, perplexing sometimes. Uh, just to, to tie a bow on it, this is what uh, triggered me earlier while I was driving on the on the five. Shout out to the five. There was a little traffic, so we were rolling slow. What happened there? Oh, elephant was in here last night. I can tell. And uh, unpopular opinion: upsets in March Madness are overrated. They're cool in the moment, but typically not good for the product. As the tournament goes on, like, w- what is the meaning of putting those words together like that? <laughs> what, like, what does that even mean? I don't know. I don't know who is mad at upsets. Who? Are, I mean, again, they're fun. Th- this is what's going on, Sean. Everything all right? This, uh, no, th- the the TV is really crooked, so I was straightening it okay. out. Thank you. youtubecom gambling podcast. Sean, to see uh, the crooked. We've TV. been here in in this studio for about two years now. Yeah, and I can tell you, I've maybe bumped into the TV one time. Yeah. And I, I don't, maybe you've bumped into the TV one time. Colby bumps into the fucking TV <laughs> every time he comes in here. Smash mouth like football, right? Like a herd Smash of fucking mouth. elephants. It's the trip. It's the wing T. Uh, we got, we already got some uh, questions in the YouTube chat, but would rather answer them live oh, wow. on the discord. I see Andrew Rob in the chat as well. Andrew Rob. Uh, there was rumors about the uh, commanders being involved in Lamar Jackson. He didn't seem that interested in getting Lamar Jackson. Would love to hear why. Uh, hop on the uh, Discord audio. Give us a call, uh, and we'll ha- we'll happily answer any of your questions. All right, uh, we should probably start the draft. Though. Let's go. And they, these things tend to take a little while with this. Uh, the, the extra two rounds. Uh, we're still in the big board, Sean. Look at this. Yep. Nearing Phil at ninety percent almost. Let me pull up the uh, screen so everyone can uh, play along at home. Oh my goodness, what the fuck is going on here? Hold on. I'm gonna fucking break something. Now this has nothing to do with Colby, but I'm gonna blame Colby <laughs> in this moment. Uh, why? Why? All right, there we go. All right, now people can see uh, the board, or at least the draft. Sean, I'm sure is is not ready, but we're gonna ask him if he's ready. I'm ready to go. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right, let me pop my head in here. Make sure it's safe. Underdogfantasy.com promo code SGPN. If you haven't already oh. signed up, what are you doing? You're missing out. Brand new room, Sean. Brand right, pop it in. New room, which means lots of room for you to join. Yeah, draft along with us. Uh, gonna be super fun here again. It's just great to get excited about the National Football League. Oh, sorry. Ryan just testing the uh, call-in audio. No, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on. It keeps. I think there's a it, again probably Colby's fault, but the adapter might be a little wonky. The mute keeps flipping on <laughs> and off. So I don't. Know. How many how many rounds is this, Ryan? Eighteen. Twenty. Twenty. They added the two rounds because yeah. it's so early. We don't know who the guys are even drafted yet. Which, by the way, this is our sixth draft officially on air. Uh, I've done a couple more off air. I, I will say you can definitely, uh, you know, you can make some statements early and get guys for very cheap. I do think we're we're looking. Who are your at, early statement guys? I certainly think we're going to be drafting quarterbacks later as the summer moves along. I think we're going to be drafting like the, the kind of disrespected second to third tier of running backs a little higher as the, especially in half point PPR. I think everyone gets, everyone forgets that underdogs half point PPR, and then it slowly comes back to earth. I mean, you can, I'll even pull up the running back rankings, but like specifically I think we're going to be seeing the the likes of Josh Jacobs, Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry, Ramondre Stevenson, Travis Etienne. That tier drastically underdrafted. Ryan, we actually got our first caller here from the Fantasy Football Podcast, no. Mr. Andrew Rob. Andrew, you're a Commanders fan. Why would you not want Lamar Jackson? Oh man, uh, as fun as it would be to watch him, 
I, uh, I really think that the cost is what scares me away. Uh, I've seen the commanders piss away a lot of money. And uh, for them to give him a fully guaranteed deal is just something I don't want to, you know, you know, I don't want to be a part of. Uh, it's not only the picks, but it's the money. Uh, it'll really just close up what else we could fill on the team if they uh, went out and got. I, I mean, as an eagle, yeah. he's not willing to take a friendly deal. He wants, you know, his money, which he deserves. But I just don't think that it's going to really benefit the commanders to go out and give him all that money and spend the picks to get him. Looks like C word fan. Andrew Robb is in on the collusion with the <laughs> NFL, not one Lamar Jackson standing up for what he I believes mean, in. I, I see what you're saying, but I, I think as a commanders fan, you have to be realistic. When was the last time you had even an above average quarterback? Like you guys, you guys are, you're kidding yourself. You should be chopping at the bit to get Lamar Jackson. You guys should, I mean, as an Eagle, Eagles fan, I, I love the idea that they're not going to get Lamar Jackson. Um, but I mean, I think you're crazy to act like you don't desperately, desperately need a franchise quarterback. Because then you're you're never really gonna do anything in the playoffs if you don't have a guy. And maybe Lamar's not that guy, but he's I mean, who's a quarterback you've had in the past 20 years that's close to Lamar Jackson? <laughs> I mean, as far as skill wise, it would be RG three, but yep. we all see how that actually uh you know, that actually played out. So it's again, like I think Lamar Jackson would be really fun on this team. It's just, he's going to cost so much for a man that runs the ball a whole lot and can definitely get injured at any moment. You know, obviously that can happen with any quarterback, but for a guy that's scrambling around and, and, you know, getting, uh, you know, you know, getting yardage with his legs, it's just his ability to get hurt seems so much more likely. So it's just, and if, and if it's a fully guaranteed deal, you know, we're on the hook for everything. So I, I, no, I stand on an island by myself when I say I don't really want Lamar Jackson on this team due of, you know, because of what he's going to cost. But it, it would be really fun to watch him out there with Scary Terry and Jahan Dotson. You know, it, it would be awesome. But I just I, I don't think it's a good move for the team. Play to win the game. I mean, I can say that if I did, if if I wasn't rooting for a team that employed Vanilla Vic, <laughs> I would absolutely be. In no, the Lamar Giants, Jackson. honestly, the Giants should be in on uh, Lamar. Jackson. What do you mean? They have Vanilla Vic. I mean, AKA Dan Jones, so AKA you would, you Danny can, Dimes. You could say with a straight face, Ryan, that you would rather have Daniel Jones than Lamar Jackson. Cost aside. With the AAVs we're talking about here. No, no, and no, the, no, and no, the no. Asset no. value overhaul. No, no, no. Just calculation. Play, player wise, who would you rather have? I'd I'd rather have in in the second year in the offense, Dan Jones, one hundred percent. Wow. Yeah. Lamar might be a little <laughs> overrated. I think the other tw you know thirty one owners can't all be wrong. I, I mean, Lamar maybe not MVP level, but I think he's certainly better than Sam Howe, certainly better than Taylor Heineke, certainly better than Carson Wentz, certainly better than Daniel Jones. I would put him noticeably ahead of those guys. Okay. Same amount of playoff wins. Worth noting. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, but could you imagine what Brian Dable he what he did with Daniel Jones? Could you imagine if yeah. he br was brought in with a guy with a little more athletic talent? But I, I like that Dan's in the second year in the offense. See, Lamar would be in the first year of the offense, mm. and I, and we all know he took you know he could take a little bit. He's a little <laughs> slower on the whiteboard. All right, uh, Andrew. Before we go, any uh, have you have you? What's your biggest uh, oh. fantasy football hot take from free agency so far? One guy. You're either way up or way down on because of uh, his new team. Oh man, um, you know, actually, I think Miles Sanders could have a really good year. I mean, look at what Deontay Foreman just did. Uh, you know, um, you know, running for the Panthers, and I think Miles Sanders is clearly a better running back. I think he's going to get a majority of the touches there. Uh, you know, this is all caveated of you know, as long as they don't pick somebody highly in the draft or go out and make another move, but. I actually think Miles Sanders, uh, you know, can can do pretty well, and uh, I, I would pencil him in for a thousand yards, uh, probably six to eight touchdowns this year if they don't do anything. Uh, and where he's currently going is uh, is a pretty good value as well. So I I, uh, I think Miles Sanders and I still think Rashad Penny's a good pick. Uh, you know, currently going at one oh five. Uh, you know, Bruni and I just did a show on some of these risers. So if anybody hasn't checked that out, you know, do so over on the SGPN fantasy football feed. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I made a good case that Rashad Penny's still actually a probably a pretty good value, uh, as well as Kenny Gainwell, both of you know where they're going and 
what this Eagles team wants to do on the ground. So uh, those are a couple. I don't want to give them all out, but uh, go go check those there out. You go. And, uh, me... you'll, you'll see that there's we, – we did 10 guys. Uh, I think we made a pretty good case for all of them. I mean, Deuce Daly knows what he's getting with Miles Sanders. I don't expect them to add anyone. Like, he's he. there's a good oh. chance he's bell cow there. And I think in best ball, the Eagles running backs are all going – probably later than they should be. All right. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to the SGPN fantasy football podcast. Kramer, you are first to draft. You're on the five spot. Uh, McCaffrey, Chase, Taylor, and Jefferson are gone. What are you doing? Uh, you know, I haven't taken any Tyree kill yet, so mm. I'm going to, I'm going to throw in. He's kind of in that tier for me. Are you going to try and stack with two? I feel like two is basically not <laughs> undrafted, but he's this phrase very cheap, which is are you going to, are you going to take Brady I, on the chance that uh, there's a Brady Tyree kill stack? Uh, going? I do. You know, it, at this point in the year, no one's taking Brady. My lineup <laughs> would be very unique. That right. is funny. He's like kicking around there. Uh, well, I, I think what's happening is no, we but he's got to raise that cat with his daughter. He's he's divorced, and he's retired. He's lost a lot of time hours <laughs> from his day, and he's just he's realizing maybe he can play for a couple more years. Oh, Ryan Baker in the uh, chat is also drafting oh, Baker nice. one two three, or one two two. He uh, took Justin Jefferson one one overall. Any yeah, other names you recognize? It's tough to. Um, I don't. No. I, I just assumed we would have seen a uh, Andrew Robin there, but he's I don't doesn't look like he's in there. Uh, I mean, well, good luck with the. I mean, who do you take one one overall? Is it Jefferson? Yeah. Or is it Chase? Because seeing Taylor go second is very interesting. Yeah, I, I don't. I, he doesn't catch passes. Now I told myself I wasn't going to build a eagle heavy lineup, but when AJ Brown is sitting right there again, you're just gonna at do the, the same one eleven <laughs> spot. I think you got to do it. Bijan Robinson is like the, and he just got drafted in the first round. Ryan, why do we do this every year where someone talks themselves into a, a rookie running back? Didn't we already have this with who, the, who the uh, Kansas city running back? Who is it? No, I'm saying like, who's drafting him where he's going to be the, the number three the, running. So back. the, um, this guy's a, <laughs> The guy ahead of me in the 12 spot and then uh, in the one went Bijan Robinson, Saquon Barkley. I mean, I still, I will still argue with you that Barkley certainly has like a, can turn into a top five pick if he stays healthy. He'll have the usage for sure. There's not a ton of competition. But Bijan Robinson, you're just expecting he's going to drop into the same role. Like right now, if you, if you told me, let's make a bet, Saquon Barkley versus Bijan Robinson fantasy points next year, who are you like? Is Bijan Robinson really going to be favored in that discussion? It, it, it's crazy. I, I like you get, know exactly what Barkley's going to be in that offense. Well, and and I get I get why you're okay. It's a rookie running back. We don't know what's going to happen with him. You're drafting for upside. It's best ball. Anything could happen. But, the, but you're <laughs> wasting a first round pick. It's uh, the ups, I, I mean the I'm not even gone. saying I'm not even saying be safe. Yeah. But you don't need like it just makes no sense to draft a rookie receiver or running back. Like when, when is a rookie running back warranted a first round pick? It's, it's very, very rare. Certainly. And uh, unfortunately uh, getting snaked, I was going to try to put Waddle and Hill together a mm. little bit like the chase Higgins stacks I've been building, uh, but n not available because uh, let's see here. Who, what's his name? I want to make sure I get J JT Goldman just decided to snake me there. All right. So sitting with uh, an elite wide receiver. I'm absolutely going to take Kenneth Walker here in the second round. I've, I've decided Kenneth Walker is this year's <laughs> Aaron Jones. I don't know what you missed from him last year. That is making you draft. I mean, I, I guess it's fair, but this is where the running backs are going too late. Bijan Robinson should not be going ahead of Barkley Eckler and Kenneth Walker. That's probably a fair order, but to have the fifth running back all the way this far down in the, in the draft to me, it feels like we're just artificially depressing them. And Kenneth, I mean, Kenneth Walker is a bell cow who plays for Pete Carroll and probably Geno Smith. What else do we have to talk about? So I went AJ Brown. And then instead of going to Vonta Smith, I went Amon Ra St. Brown starting with, you, uh, starting with uh, what can Brown do for you? Showing I mean, that, Detroit, that Detroit offense uh, is really a fantasy paradise. And I'm on Ross St. Brown could have an insane year. Are you having any regrets drafting Jalen hurts in the first round, a couple or last draft after seeing that he's still on the board in the third round? 
No, no, I don't. I don't have any sort of. Just regrets. say your your lineup's gonna be really unique. No one's gonna dupe it. No, it's it's completely <laughs> undupable, right? Undupable. I mean, I, I I guess I'd have to consider Jalen Hurts here. If he makes it down, well, you to hate me. quarterbacks, right? You're like Colby. Generally, you hate quarterbacks. I generally hate quarterbacks, but uh, I'm a value. I'm a value guy as well. And while value I, hawk, while my strategy generally is to take the last guy who can really get it done on the ground, I Jalen Hurts in the in the third to fourth round is probably oh, there. He goes. So someone took Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts. That's not a good strategy. Are you in or out on uh, DeAndre Hopkins? Because it seems like he's going to get traded. I'd rather have T. Higgins, and so I, we're already seeing really? a trend here because he could end up at a in an offense that obviously that's trading for him. He would. There's a decent chance he could be the number one uh, receiver in that offense. I, I'll just run back my argument for T. Higgins last year. He could absolutely score, like outscore Jamar Chase, who's going third overall. And you're getting him in the third round. I'm gonna end up with a lot of T. Higgins at this rate because I, I like the situation. I like the player. I mean, Sean, they're losing most of their running game. P. Ryan, mm -hmm. and, you know, I get. I do wonder what if the, if they're could they even get more pass happy? And maybe they don't start slow this year, Sean. <laughs> and maybe they play uh, all their games. There goes Hopkins, though. You spoke him into existence. I did. I did. I mean, where do you so? Where is the optimal place for him to go? Because it does sound like there's a chance New England's for real. Yeah, yeah. And that's I mean, if not he ends up in New England, not ideal for uh, for fantasy. Where's the place that you think, like that would be nice? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it it is. If he's still around on draft night, I I I'd, I'd, I'd be intrigued. I think one of the moves that we haven't talked about since the last time uh, we did one of these shows, Damian Harris to the Buffalo bills. And again, I threw it out there of like Damian Harris, most rushing touchdowns. And I love it more now that he's on the bills. What, hmm. what if there's a world where it's like, Hey, we want to limit some of Josh Allen's carries. Um, that's maybe so tough though. Cause you're fading Josh Allen, the goal line back. But that that's a, it's a it's a very contrarian play. What is the price going to be? Oh, I'm just saying like I could see it being like 50 to 1, 175 to 1. That that to me is a fun long shot. They've never really gotten that running game going with, outside of Josh Allen, so I guess it will be interesting. Well, and and again, I guess that's that's my case. All right, so I'm going uh I'm going young receivers here. I took Jamison Williams and I have two of oh. the Detroit Lions pass catchers you and locked into Goff. And I'm going Christian Watson. Oh wow! Uh, maybe there's a world where we still don't see Jordan Love. I don't think that is out of the question. Can I? Can I have a hot take? <laughs> Go for it. Um, I, I I I'm really starting to think that this year's Tua for you is going to be Jared Goff, and we're going to have to figure out a way to pivot Jared Goff sucks island. Mm. You I see you already in dabbling. You're you're really in on Jamison Williams. I do like Jamison Williams and I'm on Ross St. Brown. You're, I, like I can see you guys. peeking at David Montgomery. I can see. I, I mean, David Montgomery, Ryan, to your I, point, DeAndre Swift, they obviously hate him. They brought yeah. in David Montgomery for a reason. <laughs> yeah, I still I mean, don't understand why they didn't re-sign uh, um, Jamal Williams. I, I still don't get that. I mean, maybe I, I'm assuming it was just a money thing. You're you're back on the clock, Ryan. Yeah. I already I got four receivers so far. No running backs. And I'm gonna I, I'm gonna continue to take Hawkinson this round if he's available. Dalvin Cook is still available to me. That's crazy. Najee Harris is still available. DeAndre Swift, Damian Pierce, Isaiah Pacheco, Miles Sanders. I might have to go on a little bit of a running back run here. I think you can still wait. I mean, honestly, sort by running back and scroll down. You'll find options you're happy with. Yeah. No. I I I don't. I might not have to. Uh, might have to really uh, go too hard. Speaking of too hard, you can never be too hard. Uh, and if you're too soft, the sword vitality has you covered. Let's be honest. Self care is cool. Masculinity is cool. I love how Ryan switched me to the full camera. Cause I'm going all in on sword vitality and use that promo code SGPN over at SwordVitality.com. Get that sweet discount. Again, you already manscaped. Why not take care of the plumbing as well. 
And again, we're we're talking about swords. There's nothing worse than doing battle with a soft sword. Can you imagine a a floppy sword that's all over the place? You're not going to win any duel uh, with that kind of sword. And again, you. Yeah, he's one of those guys who will get penetration. If you want to be like John Madden uh, and uh, the way he's talking about, if you want to penetrate any sort of backfield, uh, yeah, you might need a little sword vitality. Nothing to be ashamed of gives you extra blood flow, increased stamina. Swordvitality.com promo code S G P N. Ah, uh, this. Unsheath your <laughs> This is getting interesting, Sean. Wow, I, you took TJ Hawkinson, right? I told you I'm going to keep taking him if he's there. Really? That early? What do you mean that early? He's I, a, I, I guess it's just. Uh, to me, like him and Justin Jefferson are, are going to have a very, very high floor ceiling mm. combination on a week to week basis. The defense is getting worse, Sean. Yeah. The defense has gotten worse. And I, I don't, like, if they don't have Madison and potentially Dalvin Cook, Sean. What is the pa- what is the offense going to look like? They're going to be pass happy. And now I just took Lamar Jackson. All right. So I employed the la- like <laughs> Joe now, Burrow goes before him, Justin Herbert goes before him. Give me Lamar Jackson. Now that you're a stakeholder in Lamar Jackson, where yeah. do you and you're not a part of the collusion holding him out as He's staying lead. with the Ravens. Is that your final prediction? I probably. I mean, Look around the league. There's only so many teams that can even do it from a, you know, cap perspective. It does seem more and more. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen after the draft. So the picks are a year out, and it looks like the. I mean, you can't. If you're the Ravens, you can't fuck this up. You can't fuck this up. No, who who who's going to take him? <laughs> who has the money to pay him that that money? If it's you know, like I I, I don't know. I'm gonna keep my uh, young second-year receiver streak going here. Give me George Pickens, massive upside, mm. and he's just a he's an eye test guy for me. I love George Pickens. Okay, I think he's got a a very very high ceiling. Do I even go? Do I go running back? Do, what's your scouting on Jamar Gibbs, Ryan? Jamar Gibbs. Uh, I, Jameer I, Gibbs. I I would go. I mean, he's certainly exciting. He's the second, probably the 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 guy after Bijan. So at this point, it is much later, but it's still a rookie. I like I would I would probably still wait on the running back. All right, now I'm back on the clock. I think I might just go. I would. I mean, at this point. At this point, what? I mean, you could take uh, your boy Dallas Goddard, get a little Eagles oh, on I'm the fine. unit. I'm going Deontay Johnson. Oh my goodness. Cornering the now you so Kenny Pickett and Jared Goff. Yeah. That's like two that's a half of a boy band. <laughs> that's half of well, a Well, I don't even instinct. know if I need Kenny Pickett per but, se. I will probably well, take Jared I mean, Goff. I mean, I guess point. if I have Deontay Johnson and Pickens, I may yeah. as well. Add Pickett and Fryermuth to your to your queue right now. This is how you do it. You type in P I T in the search, mm. you just start starring people. That makes sense. Henry Siegel in the chat saying six wide receivers. Sean, you probably don't even know you can't start them all at the same time. <laughs> you know, I just go BPA. So again, yeah. best player available. I, I again start scrolling down the running back list. You're gonna see guys you like. I like all these running backs. I mean, honestly, I'm not that far off of you with only one running back. About about to come back to me. And Hopefully we can. Oh, Damian Pierce was, was is gone. Interesting. I mean, the fact that Damian Pierce is going after an unknown rookie feels strange to me. I mean, I got six running backs started in my queue that I'm all yeah. happy all right. uh, to have on the team. And Damian Pierce, they brought in uh, who they bring in? Oh, uh, who the who the Texans bring in? You're you're just S- Devin Singletary. Singletary. You're just going to you're just going to let me take Aaron Jones in the 6th round <laughs> over and over and over again. Oh man, JK Dobbins was next to my queue, I think. Uh, what what am I Play missing? The hits for Ryan. What am I missing about Aaron Jones this year? Yeah, I guess maybe You don't think Jordan Love's going to check the fuck out? I mean, what am I missing? No, Aaron I, Rodgers being on the team obviously makes the offense better. Miles Sanders just went. He was obviously in my queue. Mm. Maybe Even though waited, he's a former Eagle. Maybe waited a, a hair too long. I, I'm with Andrew. I like the situation for him down in Carolina. 
Um, I do think Deuce Staley they, knows what he's getting. Whatever they end up doing at the quarterback position, they're going to need uh, someone to rely on in the running game. Oh, looking at my team, it's very Trey Lance available, Ryan. Oh, I don't need Trey Lance on this team. <laughs> I've already done my Trey Lance damage this year. <laughs> I do like your your second year receivers. I, I think that's that's definitely a, the market to attack generally. Uh, you you get more value than the first year the rookie receivers that everyone's super high on because yeah. the draft is about to happen, and you get guys that are uh, you know much much higher uh, probability that they actually take that big step forward. Oh, I was you know I was eyeing up uh, I was eyeing up Traylon Burks. Thoughts on Traylon Burks? He goes again. What are they doing at quarterback? Uh, all off season, it seemed like, hey, we're getting rid of uh, Tannehill. No, no way, we're coming back with Tannehill. What are they doing? Is Tannehill their starter? It seems they're they're cutting other people that aren't him. So and feels there, like there's Derrick Henry trade rumors. I, I don't know what to make of that Tennessee offense. It's hard to be excited about them at all. Uh, I guess you could make the exception for Traylon Burks because he he definitely had. You you at least saw some of that first round athleticism talent at in flashes this year. Gabe Davis goes to Kramer. What what are you thinking there? Oh, it just he was going in the fourth round. Just now I'm just loading up guys who can catch passes and have in, insane ceiling games. DeAndre Swift goes. Don't want any part of him or Javante Williams. This whole tier of running backs is like what do you like Joe Mixon, uh, Cam Akers is probably in there. DeAndre Swift, Javante Williams, complete unknown, whether it's injury or just role. Now the Bears did sign uh, Deonta Foreman. Should I be worried as a as a guy who's all in on Khalil Herbert? No, I, I think, think so. you still like Khalil Herbert. I, I think like what it, what is so Joe Mixon's another one though. Like he's still available. Like he was going first se second round last year. Joe Mixon's still available. That's insane. Well, because he might not be on the. It, it's a complicated situation. Sean. Yeah, but I'm taking him. Give me Joe Mixon all day. And this is probably the spot to take him. And again, this is why I think you like the way that you're building a team. You're going to finish this, and you're going to be like, all right, I'm cool with these running backs. Rashad White, like him. That was a very hip pick. That's a pick that shows you're not a boomer. You're in touch with the younger fantasy community. I mean, massive PPR opportunities. You want to talk about a guy who might check it down? Kyle Trask uh, could be checking it down a number <laughs> wait, of times. Isn't ba wait? We're not including Baker in the quarterback controversy. Oh yeah, you're right. Uh, and Baker's not going to be Tom Brady. He's going to focus on being <laughs> Baker. He, I can't believe he said that shit out loud. That's embarrassing. I, I mean, oh, you're I, right. Kyle Kyle Trask might lose that starting job. I I I. I'm telling you, I might have one Baker like Godwin, Mike Evans lineup. We haven't even talked about uh, Baker Mayfield being reunited with uh, Mike Evans. Uh, I mean, no, that's that's Johnny Football. Oh, it's same guy. I, right? <laughs> I do appreciate the overlap. I knew exactly what you were talking mm -hmm. about. Sean decided to take my second quarterback, aka Vanilla um, oh, Lamar, wow. Lamar, and Vanilla Vic in the same team. So just like we were talking about, I mean, if the Giants could afford both guys, I would also co-sign that kind of move. But this is fantasy land, so I can make the uh, impossible possible. Trey Lance still available. <laughs> My quarterbacks don't suck this time, Sean. Do you have a quarterback yet? Nope. Oh, you're doing the shitty quarterback thing this time. Yeah. Nice. I'm. I'm. I got some in the queue though. We'll see. Kirk Cousins just uh, went off the board. You like Trey Lance and Aaron Rodgers still available. That is crazy. Aaron Rodgers still available. Oh, well, is he going to play next year? <laughs> we solved that yet? No, but I mean, Aaron <clears throat> Rodgers with those Jets receivers, if that if that pans out, again, I'm skeptical. But at this point, in the ninth round, you could definitely talk yourselves into him. AR 15 floating around. This draft seems to be moving. Yeah. Let's see what else has happened recently. Let me pull up my uh, my NFL offseason checklist. I I still Elijah Moore going to Cleveland. Uh, there was some early rumors that he might Eagles might be interested in him. He would have been an awesome third receiver. Does that make offense. you like him more or less? That what? That he's going to Cleveland? Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, I guess from certainly this year less because there was a chance he might play with Aaron Rodgers, but last year's Jets offense probably comparable Ten to seconds. this year's Cleveland's offense. Cook or Herbert, who do you like more? James Cook, Khalil Herbert. Hmm. I'm gonna go Cook. I wonder if t- I I I uh I have to I mean to your point on Damian Harris earlier, like I we're doing the same thing again though, where the Bills offense definitely should be good and there will be running back production. Or there should be, right? The data would have said there would have been last year too, but Josh Allen steals all the touchdowns. So we'll see. But now I have two pieces of that Buffalo offense. So quietly acquiring some assets up there in Orchard Park. <laughs> Just building your little uh, mini Bills empire over here, right? Uh, you know, insurance against Dable not being the glue, you know? Mm. Discord is uh Discord line is available if you want to call in, give us a give us a ring. And hey, make sure to uh hang out for the Final Four watch party. Mm. That's gonna be fun all day Saturday. Give out some prizes, sweat some live bets. Sean, it's it's time. I don't want I won't jinx it for you, but it's time. It's time for you to fire. On who? Penny. Penny over Kenneth Gainwell. Yeah. It is best ball. Yeah. You know if he like his games will probably be a more high ceiling, low floor. Yeah. I think Gain, like it seems like Gainwell will have a consistent role. No, he's always involved. And doesn't have injury history. I just don't like think Rashad he's Penny. going to uh all right. I gotta draft Jared Goff Tra- just in case. Trey Lance no longer available. <laughs> Keeping people up to date. I got to draft Jared Goff because I got the two receivers. So fuck it. Um. So now I got Jared Goff, Joe Mixon, Rashad White, Rashad Penny. Got two Rashad spelled differently, of course. Uh, AJ Brown, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Jameson Williams, Christian Watson, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson. All right, I got L- L- uh, Lamar Jackson, Vanillavik, Ken Walker, Aaron Jones, James Cook, Tyreek Hill, T. Higgins, Gabe Davis, and T.J. Hawkinson. Very balanced. Mm. I need some more receiver help though. YouTube chats firing away, oh, are but they? I, I, I don't want to encourage them by reading their comments because mm. I want them to call in on the discord. What are you guys yeah. scared by a dog? <laughs> Wait, where did Madison sign Henry uh, Siegel chicken in? I had the bourbon barbecue burger from Wendy's earlier. Oh, highly what? recommend it. All right. It's a square burger though, right? <laughs> Squares the beef. Is that that's not right. Uh, Pat Fryermuth did go, so maybe I should have snagged Fryermuth and waited on Jared Goff, but couldn't risk that Jared Goff sucks. Island would be uh, out of my grasp. Let me know when I'm on the clock. You're on the clock, Ryan. Shit. Russell Wilson has been drafted, oh. so I know that probably changes things for you. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm gonna. I got Hawkinson, so I'll I'll continue to grab guys who at least have a, a narrative to take a step forward. KJ Osborne. Mm. Again, defense should should be bad. It should remain bad. By the way, we didn't talk about this, but I, I also thought the Eagles signing uh, Terrell Edmonds was a nice move. He's uh, Tremaine Edmonds' younger brother. Yeah. Uh, or who you may remember was surprised drafted in the first round after Edmonds was uh, drafted by the Bills. He was drafted by the Steelers. Surprised that he would came so cheap. Uh, he's a little bit of a injury risk because he plays like a madman, but kind of a, a like missile seeking uh, safety. So well, and CJ GJ really seemed to mishandle his his agency. He's not the only one. I mean, the Eagles offered him a one year deal with eight million guaranteed, and then the deal he signed ended up only having six and a half million guaranteed. Like it, I I didn't I don't know the whole process, but similar uh, similar situation for Julian Love and the Giants turned down a, a bigger deal than he ended up taking for Seattle. Yeah, I don't get it. Some some rookie eight, apparently in the love situation, it was a like young agent mistake type deal. Maybe it's a similar thing. Maybe maybe they just misread the market and then the collusion happened. Where does Kareem Hunt land? Where Ryan? And really, shame I, on you. Where? What? I mean, I'm looking at this. We I'm are, multitasking. We are 39 minutes into this show, and you have not brought up Zeke Elliott to the Eagles as a possible destination. Oh, because I I don't read the tabloids. Okay. I I saw the Eagles coming out and completely pointing <laughs> out that it's uh, a silly thing to even think about. So I, I'm not going to buy it. 
No, I thought you would. I thought you'd be all over that. All right, so let's let's continue to pick up some pass catchers. I do think Downs is a guy who he's not going to go in the first round most likely, but I think he could be a he's a route runner. Could be a guy that comes in and uh, you see how if you say that you sound smart about the guy, right? Like he's <laughs> he's a polished route runner. What about Alexander Madison? Could this be the Madison year? So w- wait, remind me, did he resign with the Vikings? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's they're getting rid of Cook, right? I mean. I would not be shocked if. Um, Hold on, I got I got to verify this. Too much has happened. It, why does the NFL not wait till? Yeah, re-sign with the Vikings for two million. It's a backup running back deal, two year, seven million. But, but would you be shocked if they moved Alvin Cook between now and and? The no, I mean the they're season? they're in really bad cap hell, so it probably would make sense if they were to do that. But they also and might keep him. But even at at this point, who cares? You're no, in the eleventh round. Yeah, and and he gets you like three or four starts a year. Like, when has has Dalvin Cook ever played sixteen games? Oh, I think I think it's a fine play. I like I like it. I think their offense will be, their offense will be good. I mean, they have an offensive coach who will scheme guys open. They have Justin Jefferson, who make which makes it easier for everyone else. And they've had to cut important pieces of their defense. So I, I you know, it's hard to. It's hard to imagine there's too many like clear oh, positive course, fantasy situations. Of course, uh, Alexander Madison goes. Oh, I can't I can't hype up Damian Harris so much and not mm. draft Damian Harris. I, he was in my queue. I was almost gonna take both Bills running back and hope it wasn't a bad move. Oh uh-huh, well well so uh, just be careful with uh, Wandell Robinson. It does not sound like he's gonna be ready to start the season. I just drafted Samaj Piran. I mean that that Denver situation seems pretty wide open. I, I know I know no, I love li- that. I know they like Javante Williams, but he's also we, coming off a massive injury. Sean, we've discussed this on the on the show how very very easily you can close your eyes and imagine Peyton putting P Ryan in the Alvin Kamara role. Here. Yeah. Uh, although not doesn't seem to jive with how Russ plays football. Like at this point he I don't think he should be really uh dictating much of anything. All right. I mean, I saw what a who oh Sky Moore went earlier. We heard Andy Reid. I don't know if you you saw this, Sean. Andy Reid called Sky Moore out as the guy that was needed to take a step forward. Was with he the saying absence it out? of Juju? Oh, okay. But did he mean it in a good way or Yeah, I think so. The boat trip himself. Odell Beckham Jr. Where does he land? He hasn't been drafted yet. Well, I mean, he's not on a team. It's hard to see him being on a team. And I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna take some upside here on a guy that you're, you're gonna be sad when I say his name. But your boy Chig Aconquo. Oh, come backup on, tight. He fits a nice backup tight end mold because I think he's gonna have some absolute spike weeks. Do you think he's a, he's gonna be the backup next year? No, no, on my team he's the backup. Oh. Meaning, like guys, I'd like to target here. Have yeah, very high ceiling potential. And yeah, I think you know. We saw the athleticism. I know some of the nerds out there will point out that his not many tight ends had a higher a dot than him, and a number of the the metrics that indicate how far down the field he's running his routes. So I, I do think he's an interesting option. Uh, you know, obviously you're you're probably limited by the offense, but at this point, you're at this point you're talking about him like Taysom Hill and some rookies. I still don't. I mean, Ryan, I, I just learned this. Robert Tunyon signed with the Bears. Oh, interesting. Cole Komet, watch <laughs> out. I, was was Tunyon not on the the gotta have it list with Aaron Rodgers? No, I guess oh, he didn't make goodness. the cut. We we misread that situation. We thought he was low key the Jordy Nelson. So the take is Albert O is actually a guy you want to draft this year because it was like a coaching thing. And I, re- all right. So I read the, I think it was an athletic article that w- it was basically like dumping some interview notes of Albert O. And he more or less said like some things were out of his hands this year. And so I, you know, what does that tell you now? That being said, has Sean Payton ever really, I guess you'd, you'd argue the, uh, the ginger he used to, who was the ginger who played basketball at Miami, Jimmy Graham. Oh yeah. Jimmy so, Graham. So perhaps uh, he has had productive tight end use in the past, but I don't know. No, and Greg Dolchich just goes. So you're on the clock, Ryan. Yeah, and I'm gonna just continue to I, I like your young receiver approach. I do think oh, Romeo took Dubs, him. He was in my queue. Uh he fits that mold. He and again, I think we're at this point in the year because of the Aaron Rodgers news, we're probably over like we're devaluing this offense. 
you have to think of this offense is going to look different if it's not Aaron Rodgers. The Aaron Rodgers experience, like this offense with Aaron Rodgers, is that is like it is because of Aaron Rodgers. I think Lafleur goes to a much more run happy, uh, maybe resembles Shanahan offense a little bit more, and I think you're going to see guys like Romeo Dubs getting schemed open in space off the play action because they still do have Dylan and, and Aaron Jones, and I, I don't think that that run game is just going to disappear. All right. What's the goal for running backs? It was like, good. Uh, to to get yards, catches, and <laughs> touchdowns. How many? Yeah, no, I, I. Good, good, good dad joke there. Thank you. No, but like, how many? No, I was how just many? on the sidelines of you sports for a whole weekend. I was weird. A lot of, you lot got of, me. Lot I'm going. I'm going letter for net. Okay. Again, we're talking thirteenth round. And Jordan Love goes right before him. I, I think you're going to want to sit on five to. What, five to six running backs. Four yeah. is probably a little little fragile. I got six. All right. Do I go? Do I go tight end here? Tight end is kind of a shit show right now. Well, and that's which I'm why fine with. But I got I got like four tight ends. I'm fine drafting. That's why I took a, a second one already. But yeah, I think if you don't have any, you probably should be looking to grab three and one maybe now. All right, Isaiah Likely. Son of a bitch. That's a stack. You took a stack away from me. That is a massive upside, Ryan. While you were on the sidelines mm, of uh, youth soccer, I assumed I'll you were you. you rocking your shady rays. Oh man, whether you're coaching up youth soccer or hitting the slopes, I was just down in uh, Cabo for a couple of days. That was awesome, rocking my shady rays the entire trip. And again, normally. When I have a nice pair of sunglasses, like my shady rays, I'm paranoid about traveling with them. Cause really, well, again, when you have a nice pair of sunglasses that you like, like these awesome shady rays, it's really annoying. If you lose them, you break them. If you're traveling with them, you leave them in the, you know, on the airplane or at the resort or on the beach, you have a couple cocktails, you pass out. What's great about shady rays is you can wear them with confidence because they have your back long after your purchase. So even if you lose them, they will replace them. It's crazy. Uh, again, you can look good and feel good. Uh, they've donated over 20 million meals to fight hunger with feeding America. And again, if you don't like your pair for whatever reason, you could return them for free within 30 days. That's not really going to be an issue because uh, shady rays, I mean, just look at these. Uh, they're high quality sunglasses, very, very uh, affordably priced too. Like it's not when you see the price, you're like, okay, this is a little too good to be true. But when you're wearing the sunglasses, man, they, they, they're just awesome. Look sharp, bet sharp exclusively for our listeners. Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the year. That's right. Best deal of the year. Go to shadyrays.com. Use promo code SGPN for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself. The shades rated five stars by over 200,000 people. Sean, uh, easy in the chat. Also, I don't think we ever got to my point earlier about you being a golf lions fan this year, but mm. you, you also have a couple tight ends that oh, fit Brock the pro Wright. and yes. James Mitchell, uh, oh. former Hokey, uh, both have had, both had games with Brock, Brock White at right. Of course had a three touchdown banger. Um, while you were doing that read, Sean, I, I drafted Tim Patrick. We have to talk about him because if Judy and or Sutton get moved, he yep. becomes the number two. I don't know. We've been liking him for a couple of years now, so worth worth mentioning. I have seven receivers, only three running backs. Really? Yeah. Wow. You took waiting on running back to a whole nother level. But well, your, your running have, backs are better, right? I have w Kenneth Walker, Aaron Jones, and James Cook. So it's not exactly okay. like I'm loaded up. But there's still guys I like. I, I'm still looking at a a healthy list of guys I don't mind ending up with. All right, let's uh let's see. Let's build a little correlation into this. Brock Wright is great because I think Brock Wright will be my third tight end, and I probably don't need Jelani Woods. I'm not going to fall for the Mike Gesicki trap. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to stop. Let's take Dan Jones, number one target. Maybe a round early, but I want this stack. <laughs> Give me Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton. How? Maybe I'll go just hyper fragile on the running back build this mm. time. Cordell Patterson still available some somehow top ten top guy, ten top ten football player. <laughs> I don't understand. It's an amazing take, Ryan. Don't uh, don't forget to scroll down on the board. Right, we got to get sharp. We got our uh, final four party. That's going to be awesome. Uh, confirmed. Justin Decker will be in the house. 
So if you and also make sure you go to our Twitter at Gambling Podcast to see the Justin Decker um, celebration uh, video. It is it is delightful. Amazing. Delightful is the word that comes. To mind. <laughs> He's jumping with joy. He's throwing <laughs> his hat. Jumped in a dog bed randomly. I'm gonna draft Kenny Pickett, um, just so I don't miss out on the uh, Kenny Pickett heat. I'm looking at where some of these tight ends are drafted in my queue. I don't even. I think I can. I think I can wait. Just keep firing on um, on uh, some running backs and receivers here. How many receivers did I catch you? Do I have as many? I've I've eight receivers now. Oh, do I go Isaiah Spiller? All right, I'm gonna go uh, Trent Sherfield. Don't mind him. Wait, where did he? He just signed somewhere. Where he just he? signed with Buffalo. So yes. Again, someone bringing in a buff. Uh, you know, if you're getting a receiver into Buffalo, I'll I'll take a shot on you. Isaiah McKenzie role. Yeah. Do I need more than two quarterbacks? I don't think you do. Let's see. I got. I have four more picks available. I need two tight ends. Maybe I draft Baker. Maybe. <laughs> He is above Desmond Ritter as far as ADP. All right. And Brock Purdy and Gardner Minshew. And Ian Book. Wait, the Eagles signed Ian Book again? I don't think he's on their roster. No, yeah, they they have some out of date stuff there. No, because they had him and then they got rid of him. I don't I don't I think that might have been Ian Book's last team. Oh, they he's listed on the roster. Futures contract. Oh, Cordell Patterson goes one pick before me. All right, I'll settle for Gus Edwards. Took a he took a pay cut to be on the team, Sean. What does that tell you? Sounds like a guy who wants to play for the team. Yeah, I think he could be a touchdown guy too. We saw how good he looked in limited work last year. It, healthy this year. Still, I mean, Sean, I'm I'm still looking at running backs I like this late in the game. Paris Campbell, great pick. He was in the queue. <laughs> He's going to be electric in the Brian Dable, Mike Kafka experience. Mike Gusecki still on the board. So is Jimmy G. Could you talk yourself into Mike Gusecki at all? Right? No, no, not really. Uh, not until I, uh, unless I learn something about him and, and the role, it, it doesn't seem like it seems like <laughs> he's not going to fit or they're just, I don't know. Maybe we'll be wrong and he's gonna be a possession receiver for that team. I just not looking to invest there. Not I'm not always a, a rookie running back guy, but oh Tank Bigsby, that's yeah, a fun pick. I have a bunch of Tank Bigsby kicking around in my uh yeah. my ownership portfolio. That sounds like some sort of gut health disease. <laughs> I'm dealing <laughs> with a little tank biz Bigsby right now. Uh or like a a, a gangster from the fifties. Um <laughs> So I'm I'm looking at either do I do I take a rookie running back or do I buy into a, a running back situation that just like Gus Edwards that we we love yeah you know what is it too early How did the Jets Ryan let Mike White sign with the Miami Dolphins uh, that, I, 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 I mean that much swag that much drip I mean we saw what happened when Ryan Fitzpatrick was backing up to it was a disaster all right, Fitzpatrick you know just won over the locker room. Mike White's going to do the same thing. Give me Michael Carter. All right. I don't know what the Jets are doing, but I'll take a piece of Michael Carter. It's fair. I'm up to five running backs, eight receivers, two tight ends, two quarterbacks. Do you, do I go three tight ends or is Chig and TJ Hawkinson good. Mm. Kind of feel like in, when you invest in Hawkinson, you don't have to get a third. Wow, you're putting them right up there with uh, the Kelsey and. I think as far as guys that can enter the Kelsey realm, Hawkinson's in there. Wow, it's high praise. Uh oh. Ryan Baker is asking for a roast of his team already. <laughs> we're not even to the we're not even to the 18th round, dude. 
Do we want to try? Uh, do we want to try Isaiah McKenzie? No, I don't think so. What are you looking for a receiver to take? Yeah, I'm just kicking around. I might take Russell Gage. In fact, I will. Reworked his contract, 66 catches last year. Got to do some I data see, on that. I can see Russell Gage getting a ton of uh, dump, you know, dump off stuff from Baker. Right? He's like Tim Patrick, in that it seems likely that someone on that team is not going to be on that team soon. Who's a receiver. And he probably slots into the number two role. It's not going to be a best ball draft without a little Matt Collins oh. exposure <laughs> brought him in for a reason, uh, Ryan. Cause he's big and strong. Yeah. And that's what they like down there in Atlanta. Love this for love this team. You're loving the team. I don't know. It's, it's, you know, shitty quarterbacks, but Goff can put up numbers. It seems. Oh, so do, what? So final answer. I do. I need Sam Howell. Still has not been drafted, Sean. Do I need a third tight end? What What's your final answer on that? Do you need a third tight end? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I I would probably take. You're probably fine with two. Peyton Hendershoot, one of your guys. No, I think it's Hendershot. Hendershot. Albert O is there though. Hey, quiet. Some of oh, those. Is, he one, of, is he one of your guys? Got it. What are, what are your, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to take a, a stab on Jelani woods. Could be a rookie could be uh, an offense that leans into the tight end a little bit, completely speculating, but he fits the chig model. Just big fucking athletic dude and catch the pass. Mo alley Cox is gone too. Where'd he go? Do we have a Mo alley Cox update? Long. If you Gosh. Google him, you just get a picture of him playing ball at uh, <laughs> VCU. Oh, okay, he's still on the team, but he's available for trade. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> not a great sign. Not a great sign. Oh, Jimmy Garoppolo goes, and Baker goes. There was my my Baker dream has come to an end. Thoughts on James Robinson on the Patriots? We we loved James Robinson back. In his uh, Jacksonville Urban Meyer. Oh, he days. had well, he, and he even had a couple of good games early on the season. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. He's he's pretty banged up. I would I would take a shot on Pierre Strong before I would take mm. uh, thoughts on Ronald Jones in Dallas. Yeah, that's interesting because I, when is I mean, <laughs> are they, is Tony Pollard going to be a hundred percent right no. from the beginning of the season? Uh, it, well, it sounds it sounds like he has a. a there's a chance. Um, yeah. but it, I mean, I can't imagine he, especially these catastrophic lower leg injuries for these running backs. They just, they're not a hundred percent when they first get back. They're no, not Allen Robinson goes, Sean. I he's dead, right? Like he's not useful in fantasy. anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he just had one bad year. Maybe no, he's out. I'm out on him. I mean that, that Rams offense, when it got bad, it got real, real bad. Allen Robinson last year, 10 games, 33 catches, three touchdowns, but actually better. He had only had one touchdown the year before and 38 catches in the bears. And everyone's like, oh, you know, wait till he gets a real quarterback. Then he'll be dominating. Not the case. Sam Howell goes. Yeah. Why would they want Lamar Jackson? You got Sam Howell. Nelson Aguilar signed with the Ravens. I know Devin Duvernay's on the board, but I'm going to take a stab. Nelson Aguilar, pair him with Lamar. Nelson Aguilar and Lamar. He he just catches passes from two. He knows how to get open. You know he's going to randomly have some <laughs> games where he leads that team. And I mean, Bateman's talking shit about the GM. Yeah. Duvernay was fun last year, but he's more of a special teams guy. Although I I'm tempted to take him too if he's if he makes it back around to me. You think five running backs is enough, Sean, or do I go six? Josh Kelly, great pick at this round. What if Eckler gets traded? Yeah, yeah. Or CJ Spiller, I think, are both interesting. CJ Spiller, that can't be who you mean. He played. He played a while ago. He's no longer in the league. It's a classic old guy, Isaiah Spiller. <laughs> there you go. Same last name though. I could. They're. Um, I could see how you can make that mistake. Yeah. Oh, more. More of my favorite end of the draft guys, Lavisca Chenault. Certainly a fun guy to stack with rookie quarterbacks. 
I took Albert O. Mm. Great pick, Sean. Thank you. All right. Well, it's been real. It has been. And closing it out, Brock Wright. No, look at you. Four touchdowns last season. Three of them in one so game. So wait, read me your lineup, please. Jared Goff, Kenny Pickett. <laughs> it's a little light on a little light on quarterback talent. Nice. Uh, that was a, it's a Kramer style team. Yeah. Decided to mix things up. And then running backs that went Joe Mixon, Rashad White, Rashad Penny, Damian Harris, Samaj P. Ryan, and Leonard Fournette. For my receivers, AJ Brown, Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, Christian Watson, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Trent Sherfield, Russell Gage, and Mac Collins. Nice. And then my tight ends, Isaiah Likely, Albert O, and Brock Wright. I, you know, do I, I could stack with Dan Jones. I could stack with Lamar. I could just take a B, you know, go BPA Desmond Ritter. All right. So let's talk about the quarterbacks. They're still will Levis undrafted Ryan Tannehill undrafted Desmond Ritter undrafted Gardner Minshew. Any chance he, <laughs> Mike, he, Mike Rob uh, roasted me saying Sean needs to just draft Eagles. Cause oh, damn. Wow. This team wow. hurts to listen to. Oh wow! Well, I, I this is a. T- I, I don't know if Detroit's defense is going to take a step up, and that you're talking about a team that could be pretty interesting playing in that dome, uh, and 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 getting some run there. Uh, and I like. I actually kind of don't mind this team. All but right. again, you're right. I should I should just draft from the Eagles as they are the best team in the National Football League. All right, I'm gonna finish my draft with Zamir White, uh, Josh Ooh. Jacobs. He's fun. Made it the whole season. Maybe he doesn't make it the whole season this year. All right, so I got Lamar Jackson, Dan Jones, Kenneth Walker, Aaron Jones, James Cook, Gus Edwards, Michael Carter, Zamir White, receivers: Tyree Kill, T. Higgins, Gabe Davis, K.J. Osborne, Josh Downs, Romeo Dubs, Tim Patrick, Darius Slayton, Nelson Aguilar, with T.J. Hawkinson, Chig Okonkwo, and Jelani, Jelani Woods. That's not bad. That's different. Yeah, different. Although that I, I, my, uh, my ownership of uh, Mr. Danny Dimes is slowly ticking up. <laughs> but slowly. I'm the Homer, right, Ryan? I'm the Homer. Well, your ownership of Hertz is is higher than mine of of Dan Jones right now. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Hey, that'll do it for the draft. Underdogfantasy.com promo code SGPN and. Make sure because we're going to be draft. We're going to be announcing the winner of the stadium swim contest in the next few days. Sportsgamingpodcast.com slash golf party. Still a chance to get in over there. Make sure, obviously, subscribe to our YouTube uh, page. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Uh, we will be coming to you live all day Saturday for Final Four March Madness virtual watch party. Going to be a lot of fun uh, then. So many ways to win. All right, Sean. Should I? Uh, yes, roast Ryan Baker's team, Ryan. I'm pulling it up right now. All right, so some it, Ryan on Ryan crime. Justin Herbert and Kirk Cousins. I, I don't. I, again, I don't mind Kirk Cousins in one of these builds where you uh, you have some crappy quarterbacks bundled together. You like I don't. That. You like that. Don't know if I'm taking Herbert over Lamar Jackson, but don't hate it either. Uh, Henry, D- Derek Henry, Dalvin Cook, Jamal Williams, Kareem Hunt, and Jarek McKinnon. That is very, very fragile. Uh, I would say that the likelihood that all of those guys remain healthy and productive through the year is very low. So <laughs> you're going to need Cook and Henry uh, and Williams to all like be the dog. I, yeah, that's scary. I don't know if that's the best strategy at running back. I mean, Hunt, Hunt and McKinnon, are they even going to be productive members of society in fantasy next Kareem year? Kareem Hunt? Yeah. I love, I know we love Hunt, him, but, but I got I kind of got to know what team he ends up on. Right. All right. So then the receivers, this isn't bad. We got Jefferson, Alave, Michael Thomas. I hate that pick. Alan Lazar. <laughs> Why are you taking Michael Thomas? He he's, he should be playing in the NBA cause he doesn't want to play ball. I mean, we had a fun thread going on uh, Twitter. I think it was like Katie, me, moon off oh, wow. Terrell pumped, uh, you know, dropped in and it was all just gifts of guys who don't want to play in the NBA. It's like Ben Simmons, Kawhi it's unbelievable. A ball. It was, it was a great threat, better product than college basketball though. I've been told uh, Alan Lazar, Josh Palmer, Hunter Renfro. Don't hate any of those. Although I do, 
I do wonder if Hunter Renfro will remain to be a huge role in this offense. I, I have no idea what to read on that Raiders team. Uh, Michael Gallup, Khalil Shakur. All right. Van Jefferson. I like Allen Robinson. I hate Quez Watkins. What, what's the deal <laughs> with him? Sean I, Quez Watkins. I would uh, not on the immediately, team immediately, right? immediately fade. Okay. No, I think I actually think he will be on the team because but special teamer. Yeah. I think he's going to be like the four or five. I still think they're trying to beat. I, I don't think he's going to be the number three receiver for the Eagles. And since he's on a rookie contract and has shown enough, I don't think they're just going to cut him out. Right. Uh, because he's so cheap. So I think he's going to be on the team, but I, his, his, uh, like, I think you could just figure out better spots. What let's see what, when does he, wh when was he drafted? This is last year. Yeah. This is his final year. They would, uh, they would save 2.7 million by cutting him and it would only, it would only cost them 42 K in dead cap. If they do it after June 1st, it's, it's the same deal. So I, to your point, don't save a ton, but they might need that 2.7 million. Does he play special teams? Does he play special teams? Feels like that's oftentimes the four or five receiver cut dis decision. Yeah, I mean he he gets involved a little bit. If he's um, not a gunner, I'm I'm gonna make a bold prediction he gets cut. No, I I wouldn't be shocked if he gets cut. But I think they've they wanted to work with Quez Watkins. <coughs> okay. But I just I don't know if I don't think he's gonna be their third, but I think he will be their fourth. All right, and then uh, Dallas Goddard, Taysom Hill. Don't mind that too tight an approach, although. I will say just kind of reviewing my lineups from last year it, because the tight end position is so shallow, I guess you would say having three guys. So you can have a better probability that one of them steps up and has a game feels uh, if you're not drafting a, a purely elite guy, I think that it, it is probably the better bet. Um, and I'm sure the data says the, says the same. So maybe a little light there, especially if Taysom Hill, I mean, we're assuming he's going to be on the saints. Because massive upgrade if he gets mm. dealt to the the Broncos somehow. I know that's gonna <laughs> hurt my Albert L. Draft day deal. Let's go. <laughs> well, no, he'll be going there. What if he goes there to be the quarterback? Yeah, we haven't ruled Ru that Russ, out. Russ sits on the bench, holds a clipboard. Could you imagine? I mean, that offense might be better with Taysom Hill. How many coaches could actually pull that off outside of Sean Payton? I feel like they're so starved too because of what happened with Hackett. They would do anything Payton wants. <laughs> Like seriously, uh, let me put it in your ass. Okay. <laughs> that was that was Sean Payton, the city of Denver. Unsheath your sword. <laughs> Taysom Hill will be your starting quarterback this year. Cool guys. Oh, that sounds awesome, Coach. Thank you as always for tuning in. Uh, check out shadyrays.com. Promo code SGPN. Sword Vitality. Promo code SGPN. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. Got a full week coming up. Uh, we got some MLB uh, talking to the MLB guys. What else do we got on the slate, right? Uh, well, XFL, of course. XFL. Regular season is uh, starting to ramp up. Hit almost my Brahma's money line dog. So, I mean, unfortunately, Seattle didn't cover, oh. but just continues <laughs> to be a, a, a money line machine. Uh, yeah, we got uh, then final four picks, Sean. Yeah, final four, the watch party. I'm sure we'll ch we'll chum up another episode. But Maybe I mean, we'll even get a little NBA going. Oh, are you sure? The association is the audience ready? <laughs> I think they're ready. Okay. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stegging the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Great job, Sean Kramer. Let it ride.